Leonardo Cianciulli, born the 18th of April 1893 and died the 15th of October 1970, was an Italian serial killer. Better known as the soap maker of Correggio, Italian, La Saponificatrice di Correggio, murdered three women in the town of Correggio, Reggio Emilia, between 1939 and 1940, and turned their bodies into soap and tea cakes using caustic soda. Leonardo Cianciulli was born in Mornella, Avellino. While still a young girl, she attempted suicide twice. In 1917, Cianciulli married a registry office clerk, Raffaele Pansardi. Her mother did not approve of the marriage, as she had planned to marry her to another man. Cianciulli claimed that on this occasion her mother cursed them. In 1921, the couple moved to Pansardi's native town of Loria, Potenza, where Cianciulli was sentenced and imprisoned for fraud in 1927. When released, the couple moved to Lacedonia, Avellino. After their home was destroyed in the 1930 Apinia earthquake, they moved once more to Correggio, Reggio Emilia, where Cianciulli opened a small shop. She was very popular and well-respected within her neighborhood. Cianciulli had 17 pregnancies during her marriage, but lost three of the children to miscarriage. Ten more died in their youth, consequently, she was heavily protective of the four surviving children. Her fears were fueled by a warning she had received some time earlier from a fortune teller, who said that she would marry and have children, but that all of the children would die young. Reportedly, Chanchuli also visited a Romani who practiced palm reading, and who told her, in your right hand I see prison, in your left a criminal asylum. In 1939, Chanchuli learned that her eldest son and favorite child, Giuseppe, was going to join the Italian army in preparation for World War II. She was determined to protect him at all costs, and came to the conclusion that his safety required human sacrifices. Cianciulli found her victims in three middle-aged women, all neighbors. Faustina Setti. The first of Cianciulli's victims, Faustina Setti, was a lifelong spinster who had come to her for help in finding a husband. Cianciulli told her of a suitable partner in Pola, but asked her to tell no one of the news. She also persuaded Seti to write letters and postcards to relatives and friends. They were to be mailed when she reached Pola, to tell them that everything was fine. Preparing for her departure, Seti came to visit Chanchuli one last time. Chanchuli killed her with an axe and dragged the body into a closet. There she cut it into nine parts, gathering the blood into a basin. Chanchuli described what happened next in her official statement. I threw the pieces into a pot, added seven kilos of caustic soda, which I had bought to make soap, and stirred the mixture until the pieces dissolved in a thick, dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied in a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it had coagulated, dried it in the oven, ground it and mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk and eggs, as well as a bit of margarine. Kneading all the ingredients together. I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. Some sources also record that Chanchuli apparently received Seti's life savings, 30,000 lire, as payment for her services. Francesca Soavi. Francesca Soavi was the second victim. Chanchuli claimed to have found her a job at a school for girls in Piacenza. Like Seti, Soavi was persuaded to write postcards to be sent to friends, this time from Correggio, detailing her plans. Also like Seti, Soavi came to visit with Chanchuli before her departure. She too was given drugged wine and then killed with an axe. The murder occurred on the 5th of September 1940. 
So Avi's body was given the same treatment as Seti's, and Chanchuli is said to have obtained 3,000 liri from her second victim. Virginia Cassiopo Chanchuli's third and final victim was the widow Virginia Cassiopo, a former soprano said to have sung at La Scala. For her, Chanchuli claimed to have found work as the secretary for a mysterious impresario in Florence. As with the other two women, she was instructed not to tell a single person where she was going. Cassiopo agreed, and on the 30th of September 1940, came for a last visit to Chanchuli. The pattern to the murder was the same as the first two. However, unlike the first two victims, Cassiopo's body was melted to make soap. According to Chanchuli's statement, she ended up in the pot, like the other two, her flesh was fat and white, when it had melted I added a bottle of cologne. And after a long time on the boil I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbors and acquaintances. The cakes, too, were better, that woman was really sweet. From Cassiopo, Chanchuli reportedly received 50,000 liri, assorted jewels and public bonds. She even sold all the victims' clothing and shoes. Discovery and Trial Cassiopo's sister-in-law, Albertina Fanti, grew suspicious of her sudden disappearance and had last seen her entering Gianciuli's house. She reported her fears to the superintendent of police in Reggio Emilia, who opened an investigation and soon arrested Chanchuli. Chanchuli did not confess to the murders until they believed that her son, Giuseppe Pansardi, was involved in the crime. She confessed to the murders, providing detailed accounts of what she had done to save her son from any blame. Chanchuli was tried for murder in Reggio Emilia in 1946. She remained unrepentant, going so far as to correct the official account while on the stand. At her trial in Reggio Emilia last week, poetess Leonardo gripped the witness stand well with oddly delicate hands and calmly set the prosecutor right on certain details. Her deep-set dark eyes gleamed with a wild inner pride as she concluded. I gave the copper ladle, which I used to skim the fat off the kettles, to my country, which was so badly in need of metal during the last days of the war. She was found guilty of her crimes and sentenced to 30 years in prison and three years in a criminal asylum. Chanchuli died of cerebral apoplexy in the Women's Criminal Asylum in Pozzuoli on 15 October 1970. A number of artifacts from the case, including the pot in which the victims were boiled, are on display at the Criminological Museum in Rome. A darkly comic play about Chanchuli, Love and Magic in Mama's Kitchen, was first produced by Lena Wertmuller at the Spoleto Festival in 1979. The play began a run on Broadway in 1983.